don't know. I feel like with springtime, there's just like this natural burst of energy that we can kind of have. And so I just, I guess my challenge for you guys is to harness that when you have it and like do the things if you feel like you're in the mood to declutter or like to clean. The feeling may pass, so just yeah. do it while you have it. You Seize know. the moment. Have you ever tried to do one? No, ma'am. You're a maximalist yes, to ma'am. the max. <laughs> Why am I feeling that like intense urge to clean my bathroom and then? It's, it's as good as a pregnancy test. Who needs clear blue? <laughs> Actually, I told Josh to take the doors off of our sun porch just because I was sick of cleaning them. I'm like, we don't need the doors. Let's just yeah. get rid of the doors. <laughs> no, that's valid. No, I think it's great. Whatever. If you do that, you're probably holier than me. But I'm sorry. It's. The math ain't bathin'. If you're a barbaric, you're just doing that year round. Yeah, that is barbaric. <laughs> Crispy towels coming oh, in. Oh no. <laughs>
Like, <laughs> hey, you guys have puppies. That's gross. <laughs> you know so, what? I'm not going to argue. That puppy business is... Yeah, the is, puppy business is much grosser than the occasional chicken surgery. True so. carnage, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Wow. Well, that was a cool turkey opening Turkey opening there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Honey, I'm Homemaker. Today, we have a very good very on topic homemaking episode I feel like today so this is an episode you can pop on while you're doing your spring cleaning is that a Mennonite thing I feel like other people do spring cleaning too right I don't know house cleaning is that isn't that what my mom called it I think it is I don't know the Mennonites are big on it I don't know if it's just it's like a religion but I will say like if you don't do religious spring and fall cleaning like you are just not well spring cleaning is like the Olympics of the cleaning so Yeah. yeah that's like very important um, I can't say I've ever done spring cleaning. I get like whims and urges yeah. to like clean and right. often in the but, spring. But like if someone tells me they house cleaned, I know they didn't just clean the house. Like I know they moved the furniture. They did everything like house cleaning, right? Yeah. It's top like to a bottom, thing. doing the walls. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wiping walls is a thing. Did you One know room that? at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and my mom always for house cleaning, she would um, move our furniture in our bedrooms. And we had little yes. bedrooms, but we came up with all kinds of configurations and like, oh, let's put the bed at this window or that yeah. place or whatever. I am not like that at all, I've noticed. No, me neither. Like I find a room, like I configure it the way that makes sense and I move it until it makes sense. And then it's like, it stays there forever. Yeah. And I just move it to get the dust and that's it. And then it goes right back where it belongs. Yep. It's not like but I'm, I remember that feeling yeah, when you walked into so your room fun. and it was different. It felt like a whole new room like that. That's probably one of my best memories of time. Yes, honestly. <laughs> one of them. Mm, anyway, so yeah, this is going to be a very nostalgic episode too. We're going to talk about some of our spring plans and just like get in the spring mood together. So before we get into it, we're going to do our homemaker helper segment. Is that what homemaker we're calling helper. this? Yep. Yes. So let me pull up a question. Again, if you'd like to submit something, you can either just put something down in the comments or go to our Honeyham Homemaker Instagram page that we run together. That's actually pretty fun. We plan on posting more again here this spring. But yeah, follow us on YouTube and watch the episodes. We highly are, we're biased towards the YouTube version, yes. but we're also on Spotify and iTunes as well. But why wouldn't you want to watch us talk and hang out together, I right? don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, okay. So the question I thought we could talk about today is, goes very much in with the, what we're talking about today. Things you always clean and what's something you rarely do? I rarely vacuum under beds. <laughs> I love your honesty, Mallory. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. What comes to your mind? I can think of a lot of areas. <laughs> well, things that I always clean is the kitchen floor. Like, that is my number one thing that I stay on top of, kitchen floor. And I'm pretty good at the bathrooms too, but they're a little bit more out of sight, out of mind. But the kitchen floor, I hate when there's dirt on it. I vacuum it multiple times a day. I mop it pretty frequently. Not on a schedule because sometimes it goes like a week and it doesn't need it. And sometimes I'm mopping three times a week. But um, I like to keep my kitchen floor reasonably clean. Things I don't clean, everything else. <laughs> No, as like, long as that's clean. I agree. Under the beds. You know, something really weird is like, I've been pregnant six times and almost every time, like all the times that I can remember, I can't confirm that it was all six times, but sometimes like even before the test was positive, I had this like insane urge to clean my bedroom, just the bedroom. I didn't care about anything else, but like I couldn't handle it. It's like, I, I couldn't, the compulsion just like took over. To clean wow. my bedroom. Now, two of them were pretty close together, so I don't think I had that both times. But, like, this past one, like, I was like, hmm, I wonder why am I feeling that it's, like, intense urge to clean my bathroom? And then... It's, it's just as good as a like, pregnancy test. Who needs it clear was, blue? It, I, I didn't really, like, put it together. But, like, I remember in Denver when I was pregnant with one of the boys, I was like, oh, my word, this bedroom is disgusting. Like, I just had to clean it. And I don't know. Like, it's, like, nesting, but, like way early yeah. Yeah. it's weird very weird but i was like grateful for that so. well you can save on pregnancy tests that's for sure yeah Just, motivates oh, me to clean I'm, my bedroom i want to so. clean my bedroom must be pregnant and then yeah well i haven't been pregnant for a while and your bedroom a couple getting... weeks ago i was like dude this bedroom is disgusting and no i'm not pregnant <laughs> but i did clean it and that feels really good but i don't that's one thing i don't do all the time is vacuum under beds for sure yeah i think anytime you have to move furniture it's just like such a commitment yeah. um i think for myself is i love organizing and like decluttering like junk drawers and stuff and things like that but something i always clean is the kitchen counters like uh, that i'm always wiping those down and the kitchen table like i do very good at I shut down the kitchen every evening after supper. You know, there might be something that needs to soak once in a great while, but I actually hate that. It kind of gets under my skin. Love to get the dishwasher started and, like, wipe everything down. 
that's my favorite cleaning thing that I do very regularly but as far as like not cleaning some things that come to mind are like the tile in my shower ceiling fans like Mm, they can get mm -hmm. so disgusting that I loathe myself when I see how gross a ceiling fan got it's like same same yeah you know and like there's always like random dust bunnies under places like I'm still crawling up out of my postpartum hole so I I have been giving grace to myself and I've had my sister come over and help clean and things like that. But yeah, Josh was vacuuming the whole upstairs before when we were doing our newborn session and he's like, this is so dusty. I'm like, oh, and we went to that wellness collective. They talked how, about how gross dust is. Oh, I know. Because I was always like, I'm more of a clutter girl. Like I can't stand clutter. Dust, I can totally, you know, it's almost like a bragging thing or something. Like I can live with, cl- with I can live with dust, but not clutter. But like dust is actually really gross, especially in Lancaster County. <laughs> yeah, but clutter attracts dust. So yeah. if you have less clutter, you probably will have less dust. Yeah, they go hand in hand. Yeah. But yeah, great question. And I would love to hear from them. What, what, what's something you guys like rarely clean or forget to clean? I also windows. I hate cleaning windows. Oh. Agreed. It has yeah. to be like the perfect mood. It has to be like a burr under your saddle type of Yeah, there's sometimes when you get in those moods where it's like, that has to be cleaned or I will die. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I told Josh to take the doors off of our sun porch just because I was sick of cleaning them. I'm like, we don't need the doors. Let's just get rid of the doors. No, that's valid. (laughs) It's two less panes of glass to clean. Oh, man. Anyway. Okay. Well, let's get into today's episode. We're going to talk about like spring cooking and like all of our hopes and dreams for this year. I'm not a big gardener. Are you going to be gardening this year? Yeah, I have a little garden. I would like to add some more garden boxes on my patio. There's a, a spot that's just perfect for it. So maybe I'll ask for some new garden boxes for Mother's Day. You have raised beds right now? Yeah, it's like a foundation of an old shed that someone put um, garden boxes in it. So yeah, they're raised beds, I guess. Yeah, and that's, it's really cute. I'll, I post pictures of it on Instagram. I really like my little garden, but wow. it is very tiny. So I have to like plan it out and try to make the best use of the space and I always plant things way too close together and they grow into each other and I probably could get less or I could get more yield with less things in it if I would you know space it out how you should but I'm always like no I can squeeze another thing in and then they grow and it's like wow what is what yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe this year that should be a goal to get more garden boxes and then be more strategic and give the plants actually enough room to grow Hmm, thumbnail images, impacted chicken toe or <laughs> nicely planted garden rose. Dude, I took to... pictures for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I'll have to definitely put the the warrior chicken on the, on the yeah. thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Josh always like, he's like, Megan, you are too busy in life. He's like, we live neighbors to like three different produce stands that you can get things at a very reasonable price and they plant like, like, they have good farming practices yeah, and everything. He's like, that's one thing you can cut out of your life. But I've had a garden off and on different years. And I can never say I had a ton of success just because I think my vigor and, like, well, yeah, it was like a neglected child by yes. July. You go on a trip or something, yes. you come back, the weeds are overwhelming, and you just, like, let them go. The, surely the potatoes will still grow with weeds, and, and they did. But, like, yeah, certain years things were worse than others yeah. I don't know so I I always do herbs I love having herbs I can walk out and get and that's I, my favorite part tomatoes and peppers I do as well like the hot pepper jalapeno pep- mm-hmm. peppers so I want to do those so yeah that's the pretty much the three genres that I plant um and so this year I want to do something I have my patio now so I was like trying to think yeah. how I could do my herbs as kind of like decor but also like that they grow nicely yeah. too so we'll see I'm kind of excited to get out there and maybe you guys can give me suggestions we moved into this 1970 house and like the front of our house is like these old like holly bushes used to be yeah they're taking over the sidewalk yeah and like i don't know what like very dated looking which i think that's so stupid that plants can yeah how how does that work but it is like a fiddle leaf fig is gonna look so dated in like a couple years you know and like so funny my one tree I have my mom had growing up as a kid it came back around in style again which I think is kind of stupid how plants yeah are that doesn't make any sense style. Like, ivy ivy was like a 90s plant and now it's coming back around again you know it's it's crazy how that works but anyway our all that to say our front of our home needs some tender loving care and I'm like is this the year that we're gonna finally put money into it I don't know it's it's just like something that you see when you drive by and pull into your driveway but then other than that you don't think about it right. as much so I don't know, but everybody sees it when they come to your house. So I don't know. I also feel like if I did do it, I'd almost just want to pay for somebody to like plan it out for me yeah. and I could like approve it because I don't know. 
I don't it takes know. a lot of thought like, to know what to place. Do you know where? how much one shrub costs? And they're expensive. And they're expensive. Yeah. yeah. And so you got to have to kind of know, which we worked at that a little bit with our back patio area. Um, but yeah, we put down stones, and, which is way more expensive than mulch, but then it's done yeah. one, once and done. We have so. stones too. It, I love it. Yeah. A little more Arizona looking, but yeah. Yeah. So that might be the extent of our gardening for this year. And I've been nagging at Josh. He said he was going to do this when he was home, when he was home, when the, when the baby was born, which we all know Josh doesn't sit around. He was, yeah. he was back to work pretty promptly again, um, but he was going to build me a really long communal picnic table Ooh. with benches yeah. so that I could sit like 24 people at this thing back on our patio and it hasn't happened yet. So I just have to keep nagging, nudging, whatever <laughs> the word is. Uh, yeah, that sounds really cool. Um, because I think it'd be so fun to like set a table, especially like outside with like yes. like china and stuff or like real silver. You could and... have a white party. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the whole idea. Okay, I'll nag him too. Okay, thank you. Very good. He acts like it's so complicated. I was like, it I will sounds send complicated. you Pinterest. I will send you Pinterest blueprints. It can't be that hard. <laughs> well, maybe he can make one for me too then. Yeah, there we go. Furniture. You can really upcharge on furniture. Maybe he yeah. can just start a whole Maybe thing. he needs another career path. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Anyway, so that's kind of some of my dreams for my exterior. Another thing I'm excited about is like more daylight. Yeah. So nice. Every day gets a little bit longer. I mean, yes, the weather is getting warmer, which is awesome, but I think the daylight for me is like a big thing. I know you said you like your dark evenings and stuff. I do like it, but I'm ready to be able to send the boys outside. Like they come home from school and they just want to chill. And then as the evening goes, I'm like, man, I really wish I would have made them play outside, but it's too late now. And there's yucky snow on the ground. They can't be on the trampoline right now because it's all wet and snowy. I told them to scrape it off and they didn't quite get it done. So, and it's cold and they, even if they do go outside, they're back in in 20 minutes because it's too cold. So I'm very ready for them to be able to play outside for hours on end. Like Yes. Oh my word. It's so nice when they actually need a bath because there's dirt. You know, I know. That's them. the other thing. I yeah. feel like my kids have not been getting, I try to make sure they get bath twice a week, but I'm like, should they be getting bath more? But they're not dirty. <laughs> so I forget. And oh I'm like, goodness. you haven't bathed for a really long time. Go take a bath. Who is that guy? Pigpen in like the peanuts comic strips where it's oh. just like a cloud of dust yeah like that's my children in the yes <laughs> it's like, like you ain't muddy but you're dusty <laughs> it's like do you want to do, do a bath or should we just get the hose out and just yeah. start hosing you down <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. yeah i'm just ready to smell like gr- grass um getting cut again and stuff oh, like i'm that. not ready to mow again i hate oh, see i don't have to mow. i'd husband. rather shovel snow than mow okay well josh got a zero turn mower last year on sale he claims so he better get lots of mileage out of it this 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 yeah. go around the season nice i wish we lived closer i'd have him drive it over and mow my yard too <laughs> yeah exactly oh my goodness but yeah i think another thing that you often see going into spring and like summer is like you know the whole like get your body summer ready and beach ready and like yeah all that stuff and i'm like wow that's hitting a little harder this year in some ways for me because I just had a baby and I've been taking it easy, but now I'm like kind of excited to, I always did enjoy like exercise. Well, enjoy might be not the word. I I don't know. I love feeling like sore and tired later on after it's done. Like, I don't know. I've always liked to be, um, when I taught school, my co-teacher, my friend, she also taught at a different school. We would meet and go to the gym together every week and like we'd catch up and we'd run on the treadmill and lift weights and stuff. That was always like, I really miss those days. So now I want to, looking to actually possibly getting a gym membership maybe i don't oh, know we'll see i will my not sister, be joining you i know my sister um <clears throat> goes she was just complaining a while ago about how full it is i said don't worry everybody does it in january and february and then they fall off so march is going to be nice and empty <laughs> but anyway with that it's like i'm ready to go through my clothing not necessarily i will get back to my normal size again and I, i'm still wearing the clothes i wore before it's not like i have like super I don't know. Like, I don't. I can't imagine how that would be. Like, people that wear jeans, I guess they wear them, like, the perfect size. Yeah. So if they're not exactly the same, it they makes They just fit. Your clothing now just fits a little different, and it's fine. Yeah. Or, like, like you, you can might just, still fit You might it. choose to not tuck or to tuck. Right. Yeah, like, different stuff. But, yeah, like, a dress is super forgiving. Right. Like whatever. But, yeah, I feel like I have all different stages, and I need to go through my winter clothes. Whatever I didn't wear all this past winter, mm-hmm. I'm not going to store it till next winter. I just need to declutter it. Um, what do you do with your clothes if you decide to pass them on? Um, I take it to once mine consignment. So it's like a cons- yeah. they give you like a percentage back. Yeah, yeah. Do they take your stuff usually? 
Like, how picky are they? They're pretty picky. They take – whatever they don't take, I just donate then. Okay. Yeah, because, like, back when I was younger um, and we didn't have kids, a lot of my friends, we would, like, get together and have garage sales and stuff. It was, like, super fun. Yeah, I don't know. It just does not sound appealing at all to get up at 4.30 in the morning and have to have all my stuff priced. And then it probably will rain and you'll get, like, you'll sell 10, 20% of your stuff and then what? Yeah. And <laughs> honestly, like – you probably will make just as much money taking it to the consignment store because they have their prices so ridiculously high, which works out great when you're taking stuff to consign, but ter- does not make it worth it when you're shopping. So I will buy new, wear it, and then consign it. It is absolutely insane in Lancaster County right now. Honestly. I'm always, yeah, it's. I don't. <sighs> you're better off just shopping sales and buying things new. There's the fun and the thrill of like the hunt. You know, like how guys go hunting and yeah, like whatever. Debatable. So like it, I don't know. I've had, I have certain pieces of furniture in my home and stuff that I got used and they're like special to me because I found them on consignment yeah, yeah, or like yeah. whatever. Furniture and things like that. Clothes, eh, not so much. But yeah, honestly, I don't even know how it makes sense anymore to look through used clothes rack. Clothes like, racks. I'm sorry. I'm not paying $7. Seven, $7 for a pair of pants when I can get it at Target for 10 Yeah, I know. Without holes, without wear, without anything heebie-jeebies half used up no yeah it's it's, it's absolutely Pass. ridiculous you've never been a thrifting like no i've always lover. been anti-thrifting but like i feel like i'm <laughs> no i think it's great whatever if you do that you're probably holier than me but i'm sorry it's the math ain't mathin not in lancaster county anyway and everything is like so picked through and yeah i don't know if it's like all the resale shops that they just go every day and look and see what there yeah, is but, like, maybe who is finding like brass and genuine like you know, real silverware and stuff like that. I feel like there's not in Lancaster County. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's certain areas. Maybe you just have to go very often. And I know there's areas like outside of Lancaster County. Like I do consignment for um, my boys yet. They're still young enough that I can. My daughter, not so much. I get an Amish lady to sew her some of her dresses I was gonna, and stuff. Yeah. But, I was going to say that too. If you have little kids or especially little girls, I feel like oh. you can probably do very well. But for boys that are six and eight, you're not. No. Yeah, but like I went to a consignment store last fall and I just like shopped and it was a bunch of Target stuff. Even then though, I'm like, I could spend like 20, 30% more and get it brand new. And like the stuff that's in season, the stuff in the thrift store is like last season. Which I don't buy trendy boys stuff anyway. Like I like the neutral colors and like the mustard and the, but yeah, Yeah. exactly. So I don't know. It might be a Lancaster County thing. Let me know if your area has like, are you finding good deals anymore? Have you noticed like even like Goodwills, everything is like much more expensive than it used to be. Like six ninety nine for a half worn out T shirt, you know. Yeah, no thanks. Anyway, so back to the clothing and everything. I want to go through my stuff, and I have a lot of like dresses that are gently used, like not hardly used at all. So I'll let my sister go through some of those and stuff like that. But um, I thought I'd give you guys the idea of doing a mock capsule wardrobe. I'm sure you've seen capsule wardrobes. Have you ever tried to do one? No, ma'am. You're a maximalist. Yes, to ma'am. The max. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do, Eric mentioned on our couples retreat, which is maybe the reason why I loved it so much, we're talking to Adam, and Adam has, like, apparently three nice shirts that he wears on repeat, and Eric was like, you know, that is such a good plan. That's a nice shirt. It's Travis Matthews shirt. Oh, that's and, pricey. And you just wear it all the time. He's like, maybe I should do that. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Let's go through your closet. Get rid of all the Ross crap that you've bought the past couple years. You're just and buy to declutter. some nice <laughs> Stuff that actually fits you. I'm like, why don't you wear this? It doesn't really fit me. Then why is it in your closet? It's because they why? shrink and they're like belly well, shirts. <laughs> yeah. Why is it in your closet? So I, my wardrobe, I keep, I am a maximalist, but I do get rid of things if I'm not wearing it. So I feel like mine's, you know, I, of course there's always something I could get rid of, but I feel like I do a pretty good job of keeping that, you know, to what I actually am wearing. But Eric's side, no. So... Yes, we can declutter his side. And if he's on board, I am so excited about it. <laughs> Said every wife ever. But if you would like to try a mock capsule wardrobe, just like dipping your toe in it, shop your closet and pick out certain pieces that go together. You know, maybe it's like the spring colors. You have like two pretty dresses. I'm talking here from like a Mennonite modest wardrobe. So pardon me. But like maybe three skirts and five tops. Um, and just have like a smaller amount and put it in one section of your closet and see if you can just make outfits out of that section and forget about everything else and see how you like it. Um, I've done this and it's actually really fun. It's kind of like a challenge and you're only picking like your favorites, the things that fit you perfectly and see how much of your other clothes you're actually missing and wanting to get out and you can get them. They're there. They're right, you know, on the other side of your closet or whatever. Depends how big your closet is, I guess. 
But like, it's actually really fun. Um, kind of think about it like when you go traveling on a trip or something, you know, you're only packing your favorites or like, mm-hmm. you know, what fits. So I've done that for different seasons here and there. So I'm thinking about doing it for spring again, just to see. And I think, feel like a lot of stay at home moms kind of do this already. We have our like mom uniform mm-hmm. that we kind of wear and repeat. And it's like, oh man, that skirt's in the wash. You know, you have to yeah. wait until it gets washed or whatever. But, um, yeah, I feel like springtime is a great time to declutter your wardrobe, do maybe a mock capsule wardrobe, see how you like it, and maybe maybe you'll like dive all in. I don't, just because I feel like if I wear the same outfit too often when I'm like shooting YouTube videos and stuff, mm-hmm. I get sick of it myself. Yeah. Do you feel like you cook the same kind of things year round? Or like do you have like, oh, it's springtime now, you're excited for, I mean, I know for myself, I'm excited for the produce stands, but that's going to be more like summertime. Yeah. Um, I can't say that. I was just thinking when we were talking about gardening, gardening that sometimes my garden is more of a hobby than an actual, like, production. But I do hide the things away. I'm like, okay, I gotta save them, make them last the winter. And now this is the time of year where I'm like, you know what? I should probably actually be using this or I'm not going to have any room for the next batch. So I want to look through my freezer and I know I have lots of green beans. So I want to, you know, use some and tomato stuff, tomatoes that I can that I... I kind of like almost want to save them, you know, because they look so pretty there, but you got to use them. Yeah, because it's, it's going to be Yeah, the you're going to get more. Soon. So I want to yeah. um, try to use up some of that stuff so that I have room for fresh. That's interesting you said that because I noticed I was spending a lot of money on like berries and I saw, oh, who is it that I follow? They do a pantry, Three Rivers Homestead. They do like a pantry challenge every winter. And she was talking about how food is so depleted of actual nutrients. Like we're eating a blueberry, but there's really not a lot of antioxidants in it or and stuff like that because we're eating things out of season. Like when you eat in season, it's so much better. She said you should just buy the frozen fruit rather than the fresh because there's probably more nutrients in that than, you know, eating fruit out of season. And anyway, it just got me thinking. I've been buying a lot of like rock hard strawberries from mm-hmm. California and stuff like that that clearly were picked when they were green and you know, used a ripening agent and stuff like that. And I'm like, I have all this applesauce in my, uh, on my canning shelves and stuff like that. I'm like, I need to use it up because yes, same thing. I'm like, why? We have to ration it, you know? Okay. One, like there for a while, I was like, we can have grape juice once a week because, you know, we wanted to make it last and grape juice, I won't be replenishing that to like September. So we do need to keep rationing that. But yeah, like the applesauce and I mean, we're not going to eat applesauce very much in the summer. We're going to be eating the fresh fruit. Exactly. So we need to, you know, hit, hit it a little harder. Yeah. I don't really store a lot of tomatoey stuff though so I don't think I have that's one thing that I I love it's so fun to make sauce and to do canned chunks like I love doing it so I almost always do tomato products so how are you gonna use it up like soups or like pasta like what do you guys yeah chili um pizza pizza yeah you better make it now because you're not gonna be feeling chilly in May no (laughs) no so I don't know you can puree it and make like the chunks you can make anything out of that you would like taco soup or you can puree it and make like tomato soup or whatever yeah which I know I just was talking about body image and trying to work out and get back to my normal self which whatever but I also every time it comes to springtime I always think of like all the fun pretty lemony desserts and like I have this recipe for coconut macarons that's how it's spelled I still say macaroon but no it's the macaroons yeah coconut macaroons with like the coconut blobs yeah and then you dip them in chocolate oh they're so good and they're chewy and they don't take a lot of ingredients um so I'm excited for like that and making probably I'll make a fresh batch of like coconut simple syrup for like spring coffee drinks and it's coconut I don't know it's kind of tropical I guess I don't know but I think of coconut in the spring and like what is your take on deviled eggs my husband hates me when I make them but I love deviled eggs I love deviled eggs I don't love making them and I feel like other people's are better than mine Mm. it's one of those things like a salad where like when you make it yourself it's not quite like your mom makes the best deviled eggs yeah and then I ask her so mom I need your recipe and she's like there is oh none. my and so she explains it well if you go on my website meganfoxunlock.com that's as close as you're gonna get to Janelle's deviled eggs okay I'll have to look it up because I yeah got her to tell me and then I made quantities yeah. and I tweaked it until no it was... Eric likes them too we like yeah, them. I don't know. My husband is all, he walks in the door and he's like, you hard boiled eggs. I'm like, yes, I did. My kids love hard boiled eggs smells too. smells like a fart. So. <laughs> they do not smell great, I have to admit. But anyway, but yeah, that's kind of some things that come to mind. Um, Easter is like pretty much, I mean, in the winter this year. So I don't know. I yeah. guess you can still do. Yeah. But dill, I think of like, like lots, lots of dill and stuff in the spring too. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. I'm... By the time it gets to springtime, I'm just like, give me a salad and let me go outside. And I'm not in the yeah. kitchen as much anymore, I feel, all of a sudden. 
um are you gonna be breaking baking bread are you gonna get back into that again oh my word this is the sourdough saga for this week the sourdough saga for this week yeah okay. so yesterday i fed it or no two nights ago i fed it. i was gonna make it in the morning well i got up and i'm like this doesn't look really active i'm gonna because it had been in the fridge for a while so i'm gonna feed it again and then i'll mix it this evening well then the principal at school was like oh i might need you to sub today which was like last night he said tomorrow and I was like oh well then I can't be baking bread tomorrow so I'll just wait and I didn't hear from him until after I was in bed that I wasn't needed so I never mixed the bread then today I was like okay I will feed it again and I'll mix it this evening so that's the third time you fed it yes okay and I'll mix it after I get home tonight and then I will shape the loaves tomorrow let them sit out while I'm at school for my two-hour volunteer and then come home and bake it that was a plan for once, it was working out. Well, now I'm substituting all day tomorrow in fifth grade. So <laughs> I will not be mixing bread tonight. So I think I might just put it back in the fridge. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, yeah, if I'm going to keep an unpredictable schedule like this, the sourdough is going to have to go. Like, it's not going to work. Yeah. I, I haven't been too into it lately. And I said that was going to happen, did I not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's fine. I would much rather be at school anyway. But um, you hit your hobbies and your interests so hard, yeah. and then you burn out. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a rig- it's a roaring fire. But like, I always, I will yeah. say, I I do start things, but I always make it worthwhile. Yes, like okay. I don't stop before I've got what I wanted out of it. How many hundreds, probably thousands of dollars of things did you embroider this past winter? Like if you sold thousands, them, oh, if I sold if them, you sold them, I don't know. Yeah, that was so much stuff. So. I'm still cross stitching. You are or embroidering okay. right now. I'm embroidering a school bus. On a zipper pouch. Oh, for like the bus driver? I think so. Yeah, oh if it goodness. gets right. Um, You should embroider with yarn on like little s- sweaters for like Elise or something. Like, Danica like their names. did it for Elise. I'm just, my verdict is out on, do I want my kids walking around with their name on the front of their shirt? Like, is that safe? I don't know. I mean. Maybe not your kids because they're more. I don't know. Everyone knows their faces anyway. So Yeah, I know. It's just their first name. Yeah. I don't think I have a problem. I don't know. With I that. ordered the boys' hats from Etsy and I was like, I don't know if I want their names on their hats. So, I, plus, I'm like, I can pass them down too. So, I just got them to say Fox, F O X. Oh, that's cute. It's yeah. cute because, like, the last name is a cute last name or yeah. whatever. And I'm like, now they can pass them from right. kid to kid too. Right. Um, but yeah. You do hear know. that, that you're not supposed to have their names on their backpacks and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, so, I just I don't know. It's probably safest not to, but. I just love, they're so cute, it's the embroidered so names cute. on the yeah. little cable knit sweaters. Yeah, like on a baby, too. Like, no one's going to be calling their name to get them to come over if it's just a little baby. You know what I mean? It's probably safer That's then. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Are, is there anything you're particularly excited to, like, wear now, we're getting, now that we're getting into, like, spring, like, with spring fashion and stuff? I yeah. don't know. I feel like I have to rediscover myself again after being pregnant and, like, wearing all the maternity stuff. Now I yeah. have to, like... I love wearing t-shirts, but in the winter, I hardly ever wear them because it requires, like, a layer. So, I usually just wear sweaters. So, I'm excited to wear t-shirts again. Just, like, a graphic tee and a, yeah. like a skirt. And I'm excited to go outside and, like, not have to always wear leggings or a long yes. skirt. Like, just, you know, put on a simple skirt and a t-shirt and go instead of thinking about all the layers. Leggings kill the vibe when it comes to, like, a, they really a mini do. skirt yeah. outfit. They, they really do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like all the stretchy... M- m- midi skirt like the flowy ones oh because like the waistband cuts me right where i feel mushy <laughs> and like makes makes me feel like i'm i feel like those bit. types of skirts are not flattering me flattering on me at all i do i cannot okay. like the the elastic waistbands i cannot figure you have them a really out. short waist though maybe that's why but i feel like every time i put one on i'm like i don't know what to do with the shirt do i tuck do i untuck and then it's like yeah, if i put it's, it up it's, you're then i have wasted. no shirt like there's it's like this little bit and then if i put it down well then it's like ugh. Like, yeah, it doesn't it, look right. It probably so, makes you look shorter. Yeah, it just it, it does. It looks me, does. It makes me look short and round. Like, but it just does not work for speaking me. Speaking of graphic tees, are they even a thing anymore? Like, I would love to make some, like, merch, but I feel like graphic tees are not, like, a thing right oh, now. Oh, no. That's sad. No, well, like, lots of, like, screen printing companies and stuff were, like, booming over COVID and, like, yeah. after COVID and stuff. And they're, like, going out of business oh, now. No. And, like, I don't know. Like, you can still find some, like, band tee, like, outfit inspo and stuff on pinterest but i'm not seeing it as much right now I don't oh know. no that's sad i know because i'm like i kind of wanted to do merch but are people gonna buy it if we did I don't well know. i don't know will you please <laughs> i don't know i think i think like words on a like wintry crew neck are like one thing 
I don't know about yeah. t-shirts as much. Like, people, I Maybe don't know. just more, like, logos and stuff instead of, like, yeah. pictures, words. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I've noticed, like, I haven't seen that near as much anymore. I don't I'll know have if it's more of a preppy attention. vibe people are into or, yeah. Anyway, so, I don't know. I feel like with springtime, there's just, like, this natural burst of energy that we can kind of have. And so, I just... I guess my challenge for you guys is to harness that when you have it and like do the things if you feel like you're in the mood to declutter or like to clean. The feeling may pass. So just yeah. do it while you have it. You Seize know? the moment. <laughs> exactly. I'm you. also excited, which I'm coming out of my postpartum hole here. I keep referring to that. But I am very big on my word for the year and my vision board for the year and like my goal. J- Jana just rolls her eyes. Um, I just love having like goals and then I can like measure them and see if I actually – succeeded but this year I made a very concerted effort that I was not going to until the first day of spring which now is more like the first day of April I'll probably end up implementing these things but I want to like get my vision board done pick my word for this coming year and all of that and yeah what did we did you send me something on Instagram or did I just randomly see it well I was telling you about it or maybe you saw it but the conspiracy that there's oh, months I can't missing. Stand conspiracy theories, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like that. Uh, the first of the year is actually supposed to be March, I think, March or April. What, like according to the Hebrew calendar? Or I what? don't know what it. Is. I have to go back and, and like see in the if Bible is that it what it was? No, yeah, like there's a month missing or something, and it's supposed to start like in March or April, because if you look at their Latin names, like it doesn't hold out. Like October means is eight, and it's not the eighth month. So something's messed November up. November sounds like nine. Yes, right. exactly. And December is, is 10. ten. Yes. Oh my word! I'm getting goosebumps so, here. I know it's <laughs> messed up. It's not like uh, that doesn't make sense. So apparently there's like a missing month, and it, the conspiracy is, which don't read into this too much, that like someone, possibly the government, I don't know, would have like switched it to to mess with our natural rhythms, like how we do all these New Year's resolutions in January and we don't stick to it, right? So they're supposed to be happening in the spring when you have that natural burst of energy <laughs> so i don't know it's interesting look it up see if you can figure out what i'm talking about um, you, um come to your own conclusions i have no idea but i just thought that was interesting and it makes sense yeah that's funny although i do like the whole like christmas is over like but yeah you're right like your energy is definitely not as up to par in yeah. like, january february whatever but i don't know i don't know either that's really fascinating but that's very like americanized conspiracy theory because like july is cold in australia and december is hot yeah so how does that all work out yeah like, i don't know i don't know <laughs> don't ask me oh man here we are starting our own little halt <laughs> oh, here no. but yeah anyway i if you did not make new year's resolutions or you did and you already like failed like crazy just forget about them throw them dig a hole and throw them in the trash or whatever and maybe just do some like new ones for this the rest of the year you know starting here yeah. in the spring or I like to do happy new month instead of happy new year. Like set yourself a goal for April. Like maybe I will do for April. I want to, you know, walk at least 60 miles or something, you know, things like that. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I haven't, I, I'm excited to sit down some Sunday afternoon and try to figure it out um, because yeah, there's some things I want to change and some things I've been wanting to do, but kind of putting off, you know, just my baby's the priority at the moment and everything. So anyway, I hope this was an inspiring episode or at least a nostalgic one and I think we're all a little more excited for springtime. Yes. How much of your house did you get cleaned while you were listening today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We didn't even talk about, like, hanging our laundry outside for once and all that stuff. Oh, but yeah. If you're a barbaric like my mother, you're just doing that year-round. Yeah, that is barbaric. <laughs> Crispy towels coming oh, in. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.